Hi everyone, I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms Hacks. Thank you for uh, joining in this live stream. I want to say a uh, special thanks to my Patreon supporters, uh, namely Rosa, Arthur, Diego, Hussein, Jerky and Meyer. I hope I didn't mangle their names too much. Um, they, at least they helped me make this stream possible. In this video, we're going to program this uh, Holomnic robot or Omnibot. It's got this special wheel configuration so it can uh, move everywhere. And um, we're going to connect it to this um, gamepad and later on to this uh, spike hub. Um, and maybe if we have time left, I'll show you how to do special maneuvers. I will assume you can hear me okay. If not, uh, please notify me via the chat. Um, the fan in my MacBook tends to go very loud when uh, live streaming. I did some nice cancelling. I, I hope it's enough. Um, also, uh, use the chat to ask any questions uh, you have. Um, uh, be warned, however, that there is a little delay in the stream and in the and I'm not constantly watching the chat, so um, there might be some delay until I answer your question. Please be patient. So now, without uh, further ado, let's um, program this uh, Omnibot. Um, there we go. I'm gonna switch my screen. There you go. So um, we're starting here in Microsoft Visual Code, Microsoft Visual Code, and um, I have installed the Mindstorms extension, and I have booted my uh, Mindstorms brick with the downloaded SD card. Um, there is more on my website. Um, there is, I have a full tutorial on my website on how to download and uh, boot it this way. Um, and uh, I also have connected my, um, let me show that. So I also have connected my EV3 brick with a Wi-Fi stick. Uh, this is the SD card and you can see here that it has booted into uh, Linux and so now it's connected. I'm using Wi-Fi because uh, I, it's wireless so the robot can freely roam around and I'm not using Bluetooth to program it because it tends to interfere with the gamepad um, both signals. So let's go back to studio and what we're going to do here on the left side we're going to go to the Mindstorms extension here and create a new project and I'm going to call it Holobot. Um, there we go. Let's save it here in my GitHub folder. And now we have a new project and it automatically generates a main.py file and um, with some initial code and all the imports. Um, we can uh, delete most of this. The first thing uh, we want to do is um, define our robot with some motors. Um, so this, this uh, Holomnic robot, it's got three motors. Um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you again. So, so it's got three motors and um, when you look at it from the top view, this, um, this is forward where the cannon is. So I'm going to call, give my motor names, my motor's names um, with times on the clock. So this motor here is the three o'clock motor. This motor here is the 11 o'clock motor. And this motor here, you can almost see it, will be the 7 o'clock motor. And this way I can remember their orientations. So let's go back to studio. So 
three o'clock is going to be a motor and let me see where my three o'clock motor is i put it into port a port dot a and my seven o'clock is going to be a motor in port uh, seven o'clock seven o'clock where did i put it Follow the cable, it's port C. And my 11 o'clock is a motor in port B. Because I remember, and the gun. The gun is a motor in port D. Good, so now we have our motors and we can run them, but the point of this Holomnik uh, robot is that um, you, the, the, you have to control every motor speed to make it go in a certain direction. Um, and we'll move over to my iPad so I can explain how this works. Um, okay, so I'll make a little sketch here. So there goes the robot. And, oops, my Sharpie is broken. So if this is the robot and this is the front of the robot, um, you can imagine that when we want to drive forward, just forward, um, this motor has to be still. So it has to go when, when our motor is, is here, this motor, when we drive forward, it has to have a zero speed because if it would have speed, we would go everywhere. Now, if our motor were here and we want to go there, this motor has to have a positive speed um, so with these motors in 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 uh, python positive is always clockwise so this is a positive speed and um, so here so it's zero percent of the speed so right here we want to be 100 percent of the speed and if we're back there it has to be 0% of the speed again, because we don't want to swerve. And if it's here, the motor has to, be, has to run backwards. So right here we have minus 100% of the speed. And, and then there is everything in between. So here it's going to be about 50%. And here it's going to be about 50% and so on and so on and now um, in mathematics there is a function that exactly um, generates this kind of distribution so depending on the angle this angle i'm calling it alpha so there is a function that returns zero when alpha is zero returns one when alpha is 90 degrees and returns zero again when alpha is 180 degrees and it returns minus one when alpha is 270 degrees and in mathematics this function is called a sine function so in python we will use sin and so this function will uh, give us the proportion of forward speed depending on the orientation of the motor. So let's uh, try and program this in Python. Okay, say um, let's make this into a function. 
and let's call this function uh, drive and we are just going to drive forwards so when we are going to drive we are going to run the three o'clock motor we're going to run it at a certain speed so remember oh yeah we should import it from math import sin so that's a sign function and we're also going to import the radiance function because in python everything every trigonometry function is in radians and not in degrees radians are like degrees where degrees go from 0 to 360 radians go from 0 to 2 pi uh, let's import pi 2 while we're at it okay um, then we're going to run it and we're going to run it with a certain speed and the speed is going to be the sine function and our offset of the three o'clock motor is 90 degrees um, so let's um, convert it into radians and then we're going to uh, multiply that by speed oh yeah why not give a speed statement here in the drive function um, and I think that's that's good enough for the this first uh, try then we're going to run the seven o'clock motor and our seven o'clock motor is oriented so uh, remember this is 180 um, or it's like 90 so there are three motors with 120 degrees in between so it will be 90 plus 120 which is uh, 210 okay multiply that with the speed and then we have our 11 o'clock motor and we're going to run that um, again with our sin function sine function radians and 11 o'clock so we could add 120 so that would give us 330 or minus 30 works just as well doesn't really matter the clock is round anyway and multiply that by speed okay let's um, try this first uh, program if if i didn't make any typos the robot should drive straight um, so what we're going to do is we're going to m call this drive function call it drive it with a speed of 400 and uh, then we are going to wait for i don't know one second and a half and then um, yeah we're going to drive at a speed of zero so that's for me a shorthand um, to make every motor stop but probably yeah the program ends here after one second and a half so it will stop anyway um, well let's um, bring our model into view and let's see if we programmed this right oh i forgot to connect to the model um, so i'm going to connect here to my device you can see it's first yellow and now it's green and now we can switch over to the model view and see if it runs forward okay seems like we didn't make any programming mistakes so 
by um, inputting the speed into each motor and uh, making it proportional to the sine function we have we are able to make the omnibot move in a certain direction um, now it's nice to not only drive with a certain speed but also drive in a certain direction um, so let's expand on this function and let's add this direction to our offset our direction will also be in degrees so we can use the radiance function to convert everything in degrees back to radiance after we're done and now if I drive 490 degrees it will go left and it will or right I hope actually and I think it will destroy my drawing so let's try and run this ah, okay it's left um, I think let's go back to studio I like uh, my I like uh, well yeah so from now on 90 degrees we're using a counterclockwise so but since we have defined our motors clockwise it's probably easier if we have our direction driving also um, clockwise so this way driving 90 will make the robot move right so let's um, do that again yes so it drives in a direction of 90 and if we make it drive in a direction of 180 um, let's run that again it should drive backwards okay so um, this is the first part we are able to make the robot drive uh, with a certain speed in a certain direction and the next challenge is to connect the gamepad to it so um, the output from the sticks generate a drive generate these numbers and then the only thing left to do is call this drive method all the time and feed the input from the sticks into these two numbers now um, for for inputting the sticks there is some more um, mathematical magic that we should do um, i'll explain that to you um, so if we have a joystick let's say uh, this is my joystick and i can move my joystick in every direction from from my joystick for, for driving we need two numbers we need the speed which is say i'm moving my joystick this way it's the it's the it's the length of the of the of the way I move my joystick and I want a direction which is going to be this angle remember that um, if, if I push my joystick all the way to the to the right I want to generate an angle of 90 as an output here and um, and the speed so the full speed is about 800 so this situation should lead to um, 800 speed 90 degrees direction the problem is that when you have a joystick it outputs two numbers from 0 to 255 and 0 to 255 here and we have to convert these two numbers into those numbers and there are some 
calculations, some mathematical calculations involved with that. Um, the first one is, is easy. We are going to translate a number from 0 to 25 uh, to a number um, ranging from uh, like plus 800 to minus 800. It's just a matter of scaling the numbers and um, here we're going to go from minus 800 to 800 and you can see here that in the first case 0 is minus 800 and in the other axis 0 is plus 800 so we'll have to program around that then once we have these numbers um, we have to try and find this this angle here and there is a function in the math library called a10 2 which returns exactly this angle and um, for in a10 2 we can input our x coordinate so that's going to be the x axis in this case that would have been 800 and our y coordinate that's zero and this will return us this angle uh, which is uh, 90 degrees or because it's all radians it will be half pi um, let's let's try this in studio see if i or in visual code studio see if i didn't make any uh, thinking and uh, direction mistakes so okay back to studio here um, what we can do is open a terminal and now we are logged into our uh, robot and we can try some code real quickly um, I always forget how to do it, so I do it wrong first and then it tells me how to do it right. Yes, so I'm going to, I was trying to start PyBricks. There is another shortcut for this, but I, I always forget it. So this is my way to remember it. Okay, now we have this um, interactive prompt in MicroPython where we can run motors and try all kinds of code. So um, first we're going to import our functions. So from math import um, degrees, radians, pi, and eight and two. That's the one we're going to test. Let's see if my ID was right. If eight and two of the X coordinate 800 and zero gives us half pi oh yeah i think that's about half pi because pi is three let's check it for sure so let's convert this into degrees yes that's exactly the angle we're looking for now uh, we can test it some more if we would be driving backwards um, this would be zero our horizontal axis and our vertical axis would be minus 800 let's see if that's 180 that's exactly 180 so this bit of code 8 and 2 will convert our x and y from the stick to a degrees or a direction of driving cool um, so we have this we can drive in certain directions now it's a matter of connecting our um, our um, gamepad to it. For this, um, you can go to my website. I have some boilerplate code there um, for a controller. Okay, that's the article. Yep. And this is the code we're going to um, copy all of that no not all of it we just need 
this and the while loop. Okay. And paste all of it at the end of our code. So um, with that, we have the scale function. Remember that um, we need to scale a stick value from zero to 255 to some more usable values, um, um, minus 100, 100, or minus 800 eight to 800. Um, these medium motors have a top speed of about 800 degrees per second. So we'll use 800. Um, what else have we here? Um, so our um, EV3 um, runs a Linux where every, f uh, every peripheral um, um, input device ha has a file and we are going to read from that file all the time and um, decode what's in there to see if there are any events if we if the user has moved any sticks so this is the path to the file actually um, I'm using a ps3 so usually a ps3 is in event 3 and a ps4 is in event 4 so that's easy to remember for me I don't know why I think it's a coincidence um, we're going to open that file and the file contains some some um, byte data and this is the format i i forget i think this is a long and this is a, like i don't know uh there this is some 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 code on how this is structured so uh, it took me a while to discover exactly this code but once i have it you can read from this file the binary and then unpack it into these um, one two three four five um, variables so every time there is an event from the gamepad, you get um, a time in seconds, a time in milliseconds, a type of event, a code of event, and a value of event. If we have a type 1 event, then there is a button that's pressed. Uh, so for now, we're not too interested in buttons here, probably. Um, yeah, so the, the R2 no oh, the r2 i didn't check the code for this let's let's um let's shoot on x so let's remember that 304 is x okay and if we have a type 3 event this means a stick has moved um i think i think it's 0 1 3 and 4 somehow code 2 doesn't move a stick um and I think zero and one are the left sticks. So, and three and four are the right sticks. So I think if I remember right, um, um, zero, so zero is, is our left stick and if we move it left but we don't want we're, we want to move move it right so we want to move it right and we want to move it from minus 800 to 800 and let's all do it on the left stick so it's stick one we want to move it forward from uh, 800 to minus 800 that's that's our values now this is all um, for driving a car so we'll delete all of this and here we will call the drive function that we defined here so let's comment this and just call our brand new drive function so we're going to oh no 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 we still can't um, drive of course because we can't put the stick uh, the stick uh, uh, numbers into the drive we still have to do some calculations so remember that um, uh, so our direction is going to be 
eight and two um, right forward and our speed is going to be it's just uh, the length of the vector it's just uh, Pythagoras um, so it's uh, uh, the, the triangle what we're going to do is take the square root so square root is the same as going to the power of half take the square root of the square of our right plus the square of our forward vector right so this takes the and if all's well we have a um, speed and a direction now to put into our drive function that we defined earlier up here and our robot is going to drive with the remote control let me stop this by going ctrl d and try our new code um, first let's see if the um, gamepad is connected let's go over to the model uh, is the gamepad connected no it's not you can you can see it whether it is connected if there is uh, yeah, it's hard to see on camera the, the bluetooth icon should be black but it isn't so what we'll do this is the cable that's um, provided with our um, mindstorms ouch i have to pull out, out my wi-fi stick to connect it okay there we go connected here go to why oops not battery wireless and networks bluetooth visible let's see if our playstation controller it's visible i don't like the fact that the lights are on and normally when you press this button the controller should connect um, but somehow it's been activated so now we have to wait until it stops flashing i think this is going to take a while Okay, there is a, this is, um, there is a shortcut here. Um, there is um, a little pin that you can push on the back of the PlayStation controller to reset it in these situations. So I'm gonna try and find a paper clip to push that. And maybe while I find a paper clip, the light stops flashing. goes in there yes it worked so let's try it again connect it to the Bluetooth uh, yes now it's flashing slowly that's nice then um, we're not going to push any buttons here on the EV3 brick um, remove the usb cable then push the center button here and now here it will ask for a connection so we accept that of course and right now if you can see it the bluetooth icon over there 
has gone black, this means our PS3 controller is connected. So we're happy. Let's reinsert the Wi-Fi stick. Okay, let's go over to studio, see if we can uh, reconnect to our EV3 dev. Sometimes it um, pulling the Wi-Fi stick, it doesn't like that very much. So I'm hoping it, it does reconnect. Maybe you have to connect to a different device. connect to a different device still not online uh, let's check what happens ah, okay right here our Wi-Fi we have to reconnect to the Wi-Fi Wi-Fi powered reconnecting network connection connect associating that should be good yes we're back online and it shows up here which is cool so it took uh, it took us a while but uh, right now um, both uh, our Wi-Fi and our Bluetooth is connected and we are ready to run our code here so um, i'm going to run it um, press f5 download complete this is all looking good ah okay um, we missed an import here so let's go back to my website and it's just import struct okay let's try that again press f5 to run it uh, and we forgot to import 8 and 2 we just did it in the trial but not in our code let's see what other typos we made So line 78, line 78, right is not defined. Okay, that means, okay, so we're using this variable here um, and it's possible that it has, there is no stick event yet and then the, the variable is not defined. So um, actually before starting this loop, we should um, de declare the variables, we can put zero in it. Okay, and now we are safe to go into the loop and it will for sure find these variables. Let's see what other typos we made. Okay. Yes, we are running. Uh, no more typos. So I'm going to switch over to the model view here and you can see that um, I'm moving the stick however I think I made a mistake because it's only going forward <laughs> and so let's see what error we made there Okay, what's our error? Um, 
we have a speed and a direction. A speed and a direction, of course. <laughs> this function results in radians, so we have to convert this to degrees again. Remember that we did that in the trial. This will help a lot. And let me see if that works. So I'm going to grab the model here. And of course, if you use a function, you should import it. Oh, no, 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 it shouldn't be degrees, it should be radians. So we get degrees. No, 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 degrees in a way. So we get radians out of this ATAN function, but remember that our drive uh, method used degrees. So we should convert that to degrees. There we go. Okay, I think this time it worked. So, as you can see, when I move the stick forward, it goes forward, goes left, goes left, goes right, and everything in between. So now I can turn the stick, and we can drive everywhere. So this is the basic of the holonomic, holonomic robot. Um, we put a direction and we set each motor speed depending on the direction in which we want to drive. One last trick we want to do is uh, we want to use this stick to make it turn around its axis. So right now it's simply a matter of adding a turn rate to our drive method. Let's, let's go and do this. Okay, um, let's stop the code. Now, um, I think four is vertical, but that means three is the right stick horizontal, yes. So, if our event type is 3 that means the stick has moved and the code is also 3 that means we have moved the right stick horizontally so that means we're going to ha receive a turn rate and we're going to scale it the same way as um, left and right um, namely from minus 800 to 800 and we're also going to initialize the turn variable here. And then finally, I'd like to input a speed, a direction and a turn rate into our drive function. Um, so I'll add it here, but we still have to program it up there where our drive function is. So let's put our turn rate in here. What are we going to do with the turn rate? Um, we are, this. so this is the, sp the directional speed and we can just simply add the turn rate on top of our directional speed as a component it, because if we want to turn the robot in um, around its axis this means we have to drive every motor excuse me we have to drive every motor um, in the same direction at a certain speed so whatever the direction we're driving we can just if we wouldn't be driving we can just add the turn speed to every motor here and I think this should work so let's see if our robot now can 
not only move but also turn let's try this code running it did we make any typos i think not not balking okay so yeah the only problem is <laughs> i made a sign mistake um the this generates a negative number and negative or our motors is going counterclockwise so it turns the mo the robot counterclockwise so we will have to flip that around but the cool thing is we can drive and drive and turn and It goes everything, every direction. So now let's move this turn rate around. And what you can also see is that when I'm not moving the sticks, it's shaking. This means um, in, my, in my controller, even when the sticks are neutral, it doesn't return exact zeros. There is some shake in there. So we will have to make a dead zone where when the stick is almost zero, I make it really zero. So, so um, oh, sorry, I have to show the model. So, um, maybe now you can see it clearly that it rotates the wrong way. So, next, the next two things we're going to program are a dead zone. So, when I release the sticks and they are almost zero, that the robot will get real zeros and we will invert this number. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, stop the code. Now, the easy thing, the easy thing to do is inverting this number. So I'm just going to scale the turn rate the other way around from 800 to minus 800. And next we have to uh, make a dead zone. So um, for the dead zone, let's parameterize it so let's say that our max speed remember it was 800 degrees per second on all motors and let's say that the dead zone is 10% uh, of that so if it's minus it's minus 80 or um, plus 80 we want it to return zero um, we can calculate uh, the dead zone with a function so let's make a dead zone function dead zone value and let's say oops if value or actually let's make the let's take the so the value can be minus 80 or minus 800 so if the absolute um, part of the value so if it's minus 70 or 70 I don't care I'm interested in the absolute value if that is smaller than our dead zone then we will return zero if not we will just return the value unchanged okay so this is a quick dead zone calculation um, let's do it here and then here it's also better to um, replace all these numbers by max speed so if we want to change our maximum speed later on limit it increase it we only have to change one number and everything will change with it uh, then let's 
call let's encapsulate this into a dead zone function nice let's see if we haven't made any typos run it i press f5 download complete i think it's starting uh, switching over to the model view here um at least the model yes it worked so we can still control the model and it's not shaking anymore when the stick is almost zero and the control is still proportional enough so i can go left right i can go left while also turning and go right while also turning so now i have uh, pretty much a functional remote controlled autonomic robot um, the camera is running so i can use my fpv goggles to look through the camera um, I calibrated this uh, so to shoot rubber bands. Oh, we forgot to make the rubber band uh, control. So what I want to do next is um, if we press this button, that this motor here rotates 90 degrees, so it will shoot a rubber band. Let's program that. Um. Okay, switch back here. Cool. Um, there we, let's see. So our gun motor is in port D and we want it to respond to a press of the button. Uh, this is where buttons get pressed. So let's remove all of this. We found our sticks. So. If our event type is one, this means a button has been pressed. Then we are going to check if our code uh, equals 304. That means uh, the, the, the X button is pressed. Um, and so now if the code is 304 it means something happened with the x button uh, and then it depends on the the value uh, so that's this variable whether it's pressed value is one or released now so what we can do is check for a value um, zero and the, the nice thing is that you don't get a code uh, 304 event of zero before there has been one so if we check for a zero that means the X button has been pressed and released again so we can safely check for zero because this zero fires only when we first press it and then release it so we, we will check for a zero it's a little counterintuitive but we want to know when the button has been released not when it has been pressed so if this happens we are just going to run the gun motor so the gun and then we go into run angle so we're going to rotate it i think um, let's take a random speed maybe 400 uh, 400 degrees per second so it's about 50 percent of the speed and let's rotate it um, 90 degrees i think i think that's the right direction not sure uh, let's see we can actually check it we can actually check it so let me see this if I remember well this is positive this is clockwise and if we want to shoot a rubber band we want it this is pressurized so we want it to to run backwards yes so we want the motor to run backwards so let's 
run at 90 degrees I think let's see if we guessed right so this should be our code to fire the guns when the X button is pressed let's see if we programmed all of this right press F5 to run the code and let's switch over to the model view okay Yes, we're still running. And let's see what the X button does. Nice. So it runs my my uh, my gun motor exactly 90 degrees backwards. I should get some rubber bands to really try it. I, I forgot to take some, but you know, you, you, you get the drift. This is the way you can um, connect motor events to um, Two buttons. Um, there is one problem with this. When you press this, it will be a blocking command. So while this is running, the event loop isn't running. So if you would be like turning and I would at the same time shoot and release, it yeah, it's like hard. It, it's too fast. It doesn't stop turning before the motor rotation is gone. Okay, let's get us some rubber bands. Okay. Um. And charge our gun. So I have these rubber bands. Are we still able to shoot? Okay. So the easiest to charge the gun, the easiest way to charge the gun is when um, there is a smooth surface here underneath. just and then because the the motor is held in place um, you can simply push this back and it will snap on let's add another rubber band and another one okay no we are fully charged let's see if it will shoot rubber bands bam let's see if it can aim at the camera boom i hit the ipad cool so um now we have a fully operational shooting rubber band cannon holomnic holonomic robot um there is one bonus trick that we can do, and that is actually connecting this one to remote control the robot. Um, for that, we are going to use some other boilerplate code. Um, let me see what is the easiest thing to do. I'm gonna go back to my screen here. Uh, so on there is a, a GitHub repository called Pybricks Projects, where the where where the guys that programmed all of this uh, Python. Um, that we just used the, there is some very nice uh, snippets here and 
um, one of them is Bluetooth read spike so it reads whatever this spike hub spews out what kind of telemetry it, it generates it reads that over Bluetooth and if we can pick that up we can use these numbers to move our holonomic robot so we'll go here and yeah we, we cannot just download it um, because it, it's it's multiple files maybe we could try and copy something from the yeah yeah we'll just try and copy here um, so in the in the connection.py there there are these um, methods that uh, read uh, the, the stream we can try and copy that um, so this is called connection.py let's go over to uh, studio visual code studio um, make a new file here call it connection.py just like in the github repo let's paste all of this in there um, let's rename our main.py to, to main main ps3.py so this this is our um, ps3 version and let's make a new main.py uh, oops <laughs> nice pie and um, let's make let's get the code here from the read spike uh, snippet paste it into VS code cool um, so this imports the stream reader from the connection.py file that we just did uh, we don't need the beep uh, okay the spike is a stream reader and we need the bluetooth address now this is not my bluetooth brick this is the pi bricks uh, this is so, this is the address of uh, brick they have at pi bricks now my brick has got a different bluetooth address i just looked it up when um, connecting the other day I, I i wrote it down in evernote if you go um, to this um, pi bricks projects uh, here there is also a readme file where where they explain how to get this uh, address um, this is the address of um, my uh, spike hub and we can read the values okay but we're not interested in every value per se what we want is um, I think it's the, the gyro gyroscope so for this we go into the connection.py and let's see what functions there is oh no it's acceleration so acceleration is um, the g-force that's uh, generated um, by, by, by gravity and um, if I keep my spike hub up straight um, two of the acceleration values should be zero and the vertical one that's pointed towards the earth is going to be one or a thousand it, I, I don't know depends on the scaling so what we need is the acceleration um, so let's print acceleration and um, let's do this all the time while true okay now let's see what this does oh yeah I power on my spike hub okay and I run this code 
Let's see if that works. Okay. Yes, we're connected. So now you can see that, um, let me unlock this one, that the first value is minus a lot, which means that um, this is the vector that's pointed towards Earth when I um, keep my uh, hub up straight. And then there are two more values. Now, if I tilt my hub left, I see the last value move um, positively. So we'll have to invert that number. And if I tilt it right, oh, let's unlock this again. It becomes negative. Cool. If I tilt my hub forward, uh, this number becomes uh, negative. So we have to invert that. And if I tilt it backwards, it becomes positive. So we will discard the first number, um, put the second number into forwards and backwards after reversing it and put the last number into left and right after reversing it. Um, is that all we need? Yeah, I, I think so. That, that should already move our holonomic robot in some directions. So let's stop this script and go back to our version here. What we need is, we need our max speed dead zone, we need our motor declarations, we need our drive function, and I think, and we need our imports, except the struct, because the struct import was specifically for um, PS3 controller. So we will copy all of this, paste it in our new file here so um, and it's kind of neat to have all our imports together now we have the stream reader we have all our motor declarations our dead zone our drive function and what the only thing we'll do now is instead of printing the acceleration values I'm just going to feed them into the drive function so we're going to drive and um, ah, speed direction turn uh, we have only X and Y and we still have to calculate speed and direction from that we're going to copy these calculations from our other file so this is our direction and speed calculation is still is valid so let's add our direction and speed calculations here um, let's declare our variables also um, while this isn't technically necessary uh, let's do it anyway Okay, so now we have a direction and a speed, and then right and forward are two numbers we should get from our spike acceleration. So, spike acceleration. Remember that we got we got three numbers here, where um, uh, down we we're not interested in down. Um, we're interested in, in uh, down, I think it was backwards and it was left, so we had to. Okay, these are the numbers that we got back and then we have to say that forward is backwards inverted and right is left inverted. Let's see if we did this right. Um, let's run it. Did we make any typos? Does it barf? Um, ah, we are missing some import. Um, 
So this only imports the EV3 brick and wait to run our um, code. We also need a motor and a port to be imported. So let's copy all of this and go over here. Paste all of that. So now we have a complete set of imports. Run it again. Okay, switch over to the model view. Did we do it right? Let's see. Yes, forward, backward, right, left, forward, backward. Okay, so, and then finally, the last thing we'll do is connect this um, motor to the turn rate and connect this button to the to the gun on our Omnibot. So I'm gonna put this down there and do the last bit of pro um, Okay, so this is our, uh, well, let's go back to studio here. So these were our acceleration values. Now we need to read a motor. And let's see. The motor, the motor is in port C and the button is in port E. Okay. Let's check our connection file here for functions. Okay, so there is a device uh, method that returns the value of the values of anything in a certain port so what we'll do is why not start printing things first so we're going to print um, spike.device remember it was the device method and um, we are interested in port C and we're also interested in port E. Let's see what values we get when we run this. Okay, now port C was the motor I'll unlock this so we can see the most recent values. If we press the button, you can see that the, 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 the second list of numbers increases. So the, the first number is how hard I press the button. So we can put a threshold at five. If it's five or higher, we can shoot the gun. Now, uh, the other four numbers are motor numbers um, where the second number is like the um, absolute degrees or the, 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 the it's, it's a rotational counter and the third number is the absolute degrees so you can see it's a number that goes from uh, I think it goes from 180 to minus 180 yeah so it's 180 to minus 180, so it's the absolute position of the encoder, not so very interesting. Also, the other number is not very interesting, but the first number is interesting. It is the motor speed, because we want to connect the, the speed at which we turn this motor to the turn rate um, of our holonomic robot. Um, so, this means, let's stop this, that um, turn equals uh, bike device C and we are interested in the first number so in Python if you um, add a square brackets after a list this means that we want the first number it's a zero index so this is the first number from that list and um, remember that those numbers were really low, 
so let's multiply it by I don't know two to increase it a little and um, then of course our gun okay if the first number in our so again here these gives us three numbers but we're interested in the fourth number so let's do square brackets and then a zero so this only returns the first number if that uh, is equal or larger than larger than or equal uh, five this means the the button is pressed let's fire the gun so let's go gun dot um, run angle 400 minus 90 and let's remove that so now we have connected the button pressure to the gun and we have connected the turn rate to the speed at which we uh, turn this uh, last motor let's see if we have made any typos in our code switch over to the model okay yes it turns but really slowly so this factor of two has been too low i think i'm going to give it a factor of 20 and does it shoot the gun it shoots the gun so when i press the button it shoots the gun so that works the only thing i have to do is uh, speed this one up okay so that's the last thing we will be doing in this live stream and then um, <laughs> we will be calling it a day so we are going to increase the factor here tenfold and then um, see if this gives us a better control i didn't check the direction i think the direction was right but let's um, run it again okay okay i think the direction was fine switch over to the model view okay let's see yeah this feels intuitively intuitive so i can move the robot now in every direction use this steering wheel here to rotate it and um, use this button to shoot rubber bands cool so now we have uh, i've shown you how to program a, a holonomic robot both with a ps3 gamepad and um, this spike as a remote device. I hope uh, you interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing videos with uh, your creation online. Um, thanks for watching. Um, again, I'd appreciate it if you'd support me on uh, Patreon. Um, so it's uh, patreon.com slash Anton's Mindstorms where you can support me so I can make more of these uh, videos um, if you want to build this uh, holonomic robot I'm gonna, gonna gonna grab it here okay so if you want to build this robot um, head over to my website antonsmindstorms.com you can download uh, the building instructions it's in the main menu on the right uh, under download and then you can make your own version of this robot it's fun to drive around even if you don't have an fpv set uh, this fpv set um, i took it from my uh, drone um, makes it all the more fun um, yeah so yeah and if you like i also have uh, some some uh, i like to design so i design some t-shirts from time to time um, there is also a t-shirt uh, shop on my website um maybe there's something some design you like and it also all all of these bits help me to make um, more videos and give you more uh programming tips and tricks um well thanks for watching 
Have a nice day. See you later. Bye.